You guys got an afterburner on some of your aircraft? So circa 1991 or thereabouts, Flying Tigers had just been purchased by Federal Express. And FedEx had the largest number of 727s in the world. They'd inherited them from and bought from on the cheap, thank you, United, American, several other carriers along the way, and Eastern had just folded as well. So they had more, a lot of airplanes. They had 200, I think, 727s. Some 100s, some 200s. It was a cold, dark night in Indianapolis on a Monday night, and we were flying a 100 727, and I knew the co-pilot from the Flying Tiger days, the engineer I had never met before. It had snowed like a son of a gun Saturday, and so they had cleared the runways and done the stuff. They had some melting on Sunday and Monday, but then it refroze on the runway. So it was that like a road, like clunk, clunk as you run down the runway, etc. Everything was normal. Gave the leg to the co-pilot because we only had one leg together, and we're headed back into Mother Memphis, the mothership of Federal Express. And so we stand the throttles up, do our thing, cold. It's cold, so we're gonna get great performance. And we only, we're light, because we only have enough gas to get to Memphis with a nice load of, of freight as well. We put the power up, the captain always made the power adjustments, etc. And as I was guarding the throttles, I noticed that the number two EPR came down a little bit. That's engine pressure ratio. It's our basic power gauge. So I had all the set, and then this one came down a little bit, and just creep the number two throttle up a little bit. Then we had this buzz, a real high frequency buzz. Bzzz, in the number two throttle, and we're accelerating very fast. Everything else is looking good. All 12 gauge, 16 gauges, uh, 12 gauges of the three engines time for, we're fine. V1, rotate, did our thing. So the, the, uh, I called the positive rate, First officer's gear up, so I get the gear up and do the thing. Then I had a call from the tower. Tower says, our call sign at that time was not FedEx, it was Express. So Express, whatever it was, one, two, three. You got time for a question? We said, well, sure, go ahead. He said, you guys got an afterburner on some of your aircraft? I said, no, sir, this is an old 100. He said, there's a hell of a flame out of the back end of your engine. My response was, that uh, makes sense. Okay, that does it for us. Thank you very much. We're coming back. So by that time, he knew we were going to do what we need to do. Everything else was still good. We were flying. We were cleaning up. It was no problem. Retarded the number two throttle and it got an 80 to 60. 80 to the right, 260 to come back around and land the opposite direction on the same runway. We did a fire test just to be sure it wasn't a fire because the loop would show, in fact, that it, if it didn't test, then we had a fire. Why well, shut the engine down when I had a generator that worked fine? And I had hydraulics of our two hydraulic systems, and I didn't want to lose half of that. And I had had the experience at least being exposed to at Tigers with a crew that lost one engine on takeoff and another one downwind. And when you're dirty and slow in a 727, you don't want to be slow and low to the ground and not have the acceleration capability. And they lost both hydraulics, in addition to having to crank the gear down and make a partial flap landing. So I wasn't in a hurry to shut the engine down. We came back around. The copilot was doing a great job. It was visual. It was plenty clear. Everything's fine. He turns on final. We got about the four mile final in the whole thing. And I look at him and said, you know, I have to make the landing because company policy would be that. I said, if anything would happen whatsoever, I got to make the landing. So we'd had the trucks coming out and the whole thing, no problem. We land. There's nothing indication that anything else is wrong. We stop on the runway. We have the fire marshal come back around. There's no burning. There's no something else at all. We taxi into the uh, chart or to the chalks. I block the door so that we can get our act together and be sure you saw what I saw, you saw what I, so we had got our story together so it was all 100% and I didn't miss anything. Open the door up, exchange documents with the fire marshal. We went inside, we wrote a report. An hour and 17 minutes later, they had transloaded their freight to another airplane and 
off down the runway we go again, headed to Memphis. What caused it? Don't know. My thought was, if it had been something similar to the previous Flying Tiger experience, some contract maintenance people had run an engine, and people don't remember necessarily that that number two engine is not in the frame itself. There's a big S duct, and that's what that hole in the top of the airplane was, just to feed air into the number two engine that was in line with number one and number three, unlike a DC-10 where the engine is actually through the tail. What had happened was they partially melted the snow that had gone through the duct over the weekend in that incident, and it had refrozen, and they sucked an iceberg into the number two engine, stopping it, and the same procedure had happened, not through an S-duct, but on one of the other engines as well, and I wanted to avoid that at all possibilities. The other one was potentially bad gas. So there ends the story got the, uh, the, the, the airplane to Memphis, talked to the director of operations, and he asked one question. I said, well, what's that? He said, uh, uh, were there any jump seaters on board? Back in those days, we had two cockpit jump seats and were open to any FedEx employee that wanted to ride. I said, no. He said, darn. I said, what? He said, I wish they would have been able to see you guys at work. So, months later, after the safety report is written and the whole thing, is what caused the problem? What caused the problem? It wasn't a snowball. It wasn't ice. He said, whatever was in there was hard. And he sent me a blade from the back end of the engine that I had on my desk for the longest period of time. And there was a huge gap out of it, like a toolbox, or at least portions of it in there, and this titanium blade. So all's well that ends well. And uh, just darn happy to be here. Another night in a freighter's life.